Okay, so this super capacitor has been powering this motor for over one hour so far. And I'll continue to run it. Uh, this is the first long run test I've done with this uh, super capacitor. Okay, so what I have here is a super capacitor. It's using graphene and activated carbon. And I've been working on some smaller ones. I've made up a lot of these in different variations. And uh, this is the largest one I made today. You can see it's holding around five volts. It'll drop down to four and a half volts or so. I just charged it here. But yeah, let me go ahead and uh, connect it up to some stuff and you can see what it can do. Okay, so we have one of the uh, USB light bulbs. And uh, I went ahead and removed the USB plug on here so that I can just plug it in and test. But uh, so far, it's uh, lighting those up just fine. So that is encouraging. You know, the first ones that I made, this one would run uh, small motors, it would run this motor. And I'll show some of the clips of the history leading up to this. And you can kind of see the progression. But I have tested all kinds of configurations. I've been on the phone with Robert Murray Smith. I'm gonna put a link to his uh, ebook in this video description, you can check that out. That ebook had a lot of the information that got me up and running. But anyway, connected up to the uh, Light. I'm going to go ahead and connect it to the fan here, and you'll see the uh, it does have enough energy to spin up the fan. So that's pretty cool. I really didn't know if it would run something of this size. And then I'll go ahead and connect it up here to the smaller uh, motor. And you can see how it runs this little guy. Because it, it's higher voltage, it really uh, takes off on that. Let me see if I can grab something to see what I'm talking about. It's got some serious torque on this little guy. You could about hook up a small saw blade on this or a sander. But anyway, that's where I'm at. It charges very quick. Uh, usually I can charge this in about 10 seconds. Okay, so I've completely discharged this supercapacitor and I've got it connected here to the motor right now. Now I'm just gonna charge it. I'm basically gonna spike this. I've got my power supply set at 30 volts, uh, five amps. I'm just gonna spike this with a 10 second charge. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 7,000, 8,000, 9,000, 10,000. that's approximately a 10 second charge. So after charging this for about 10 seconds, we can connect it back up and off we go. We're up and running again. So that quick chargeability, you know, that's really one of the areas that these supercapacitors shine. Yeah. So anyway, I've been experimenting with uh, supercapacitors. As you know, if you follow my YouTube channel for quite some time, using it to start cars, all kinds of applications. But I never really thought that I could uh, make my own supercapacitors easily. And I really want to thank uh, Robert Murray Smith for the work he's done and shared so freely on this. And I'll continue on to, uh, you know, share everything I can about making these as I perfect, you know, the recipe and the construction method and all of that. Okay, I'm sure you're going to wonder about the electrolyte. I'm using this phosphoric acid. I got this off Amazon. Uh, so anyway, like I said, in the future I'll have some videos going over this, construction methods, all of that. But for now, that's uh, where I'm at with this. So the construction of this was pretty simple. And you can see here the, uh, the two conductor plates here, but I went ahead and got some Plasti Dips uh, material, and that stuff worked really well. Uh, you know, I got this stuff right here, and I just went ahead and sealed this. Now, this first one I made, I never sealed it, and it dried out inside, it quit working as well, but this one is completely sealed, and I think that's going to make a huge difference in its uh, life and longevity, so anyway. So going into the construction method, and at this point, I'm just going to link to Robert Murray Smith's ebook. But as I improve and come up with something that's easily reproduced and you know cheap to make, I'm going to go ahead and make a step-by-step -step how to build su a supercapacitor video. And I'll try to make it as clear and simple as possible. But what we got here is the conductor. And I really just mixed um, onto the conductor some of this graphene powder. And, uh, you know, in the future when we get the how to build video, I'll get links and I'll, I'll make a proper web page on just that. But this is a graphene powder. And it's different than the ultra fine graphite powder and things of that nature. I'm experimenting with all of that as well. But I mixed this with some polyurethane as a binder and painted it right onto this, so the whole surface here. 
And then I take activated charcoal that I grind down into certain, you know, little granular pieces. And I'll, I'll put some photos on here. You can see what I'm talking about. But you take this and you dust it and uh, while, while it's still wet. And that binds it into the uh, binder and you kind of get a lot of surface area. Okay, so one of the reasons I am so excited about supercapacitor technology, and especially these ones that you can make yourself easily, is that I believe we can make these really thin and build them right into the back of a solar panel. So I can create a solar in one device that has the energy storage built right into the back surface of the solar panel. So I'm sure you can kind of see where I'm heading with that. Okay, so here's one other test I want to do. I have a DC to DC converter hooked up here running to my inverter, my 12 volt inverter. This is in no ways 12 volts coming off this. So I'm having to boost it up with this boost converter, but test to see if it powers up the inverter. <laughs> Almost. That is right on the edge. So I'm still too low probably in the voltage here. If I had two of these in series, I bet I could power that right up. But uh, you know, at this point, throwing a uh, jewel ring around here would probably uh, power it up. Could get rid of using this. But anyway, almost got enough to uh, power up this, I don't know, 8 watt light bulb or whatever. Runs the little uh, USB light bulb uh, just fine in my experience. So I'll go ahead and connect that through the, uh, the converter here and see if that powers up. I ran it earlier with uh, just directly, but this should give it a, a boost in voltage. Yeah, look at that. So runs that just fine. And uh, anyway, that's really gonna be it for this video. Let's all keep experimenting. Let's keep sharing uh, the stuff we find, collaborating together. And uh, yeah, maybe we can make this world a better place.